Hey there everyone, it is Maria here and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys just how easy it is to make one of the best natural and organic fertilizers there is and all made out of seaweed. To collect the seaweed, all I simply did was go to the beach and collect the seaweed that had washed on the shoreline. I definitely would not recommend collecting any seaweed that is alive and growing well because it is a very important part of the ecosystem in which wildlife, organisms, and plants also thrive and grow off of. Now before you do start collecting the seaweed, I would advise that you check out the rules, regulations, and restrictions to harvesting seaweed because in some areas it is actually illegal, so I definitely would advise you check out those rules. And the type of fertilizer that we will be making today is a form of seaweed tea fertilizer, which I believe is so beneficial because seaweed actually has so many different micro and macro nutrients. They actually say about 60 to 100 different types. But not only that, you're also getting traces of minerals and hormones as well. I mean, seaweed is just so jam-packed with plant growing goodness and actually has what a lot of your other fertilizers do not have. The type of seaweed that we will be using today is called sargassum seaweed, which is commonly known and used as fertilizer. Now there are so many other different varieties of seaweed that you can use, so you are definitely not limited. Also, if you guys want more information on the different types of seaweeds that you can use, I will definitely post a link below so you can also do your research. And I have to tell you what I do love most about this type of fertilizer is the fact that it is natural. There is no additives, there is no preservatives, and you don't have to worry about toxic chemicals being included in your fertilizer. And not only that, it is at its freshest state. I mean, you just collected it from the beach which means that it is jam-packed with the nutrients and the growing power that your plants need. You definitely are going to get the greatest impact from this fertilizer. And there is actually so many different ways that you can use seaweed on your plants and also in your gardens. And in future episodes, I'll be explaining in detail how to do just that, so please stay tuned for those videos. And if you cannot harvest seaweed in your location, please do not let that stop you because there are several locations that you can make your purchase of seaweed, including your whole food stores and also your Asian supermarkets and also some of your herbal shops. And if push comes to shove, you can also find it online on eBay and also Amazon. And if you do purchase your seaweed, just make sure it is dried seaweed. You don't want it roasted or baked because that will take away the nutrients from the seaweed. And another tremendous benefit of using this homemade fertilizer is the fact that you are going to be saving so much money. As you guys know, seaweed extract and fertilizers can be so pricey. A little bit of seaweed goes a long, long way when you are making this fertilizer. So again, you are gonna be saving a whole lot of buckaroonies. I can guarantee it. Now before we begin, I really must forewarn you that this fertilizer right here can be quite a stinker. So you definitely want to use this outdoors or in a well-ventilated area because it does have quite a kick regarding its scent. Also before we begin, I do want to caution you that when you are collecting the seaweed and you're also cleaning it off, to make sure that you do it cautiously. You wanna wear some sort of gloves to protect your hands because there may be some man-made products or things that could have gotten caught up in the seaweed that could actually pose as a danger to you, such as fishing hooks and things of that nature. So again, just be cautious when you are handling the seaweed. Okay, and here is the actual seaweed that we did obtain directly from the beach yesterday. And I do have it soaking in a bucket of water right here. It's been soaking overnight. And that is basically to clean off the salt and also any other material that might have been caught up in the seaweed. So all I'm doing now is basically manually washing it with my hand. Again, just trying to get everything removed that we don't want within this seaweed. 
And then afterwards, we're gonna take this out of this bucket and we're gonna go ahead and hose it down for a second cleaning. And right here is actually where we're gonna place the seaweed for that second cleaning, where we're gonna hose it down. And this is basically a netting material that allows the water to go through. And this is also a good way to dry off the actual seaweed too, if you want to, which we're gonna do as well, so that we can further save the seaweed for a later date. And yeah, this needed a major cleanup. Can you guys see all that sand that was left in the bucket? Now that the seaweed is all cleaned off, we're gonna go ahead and fill up this container with water. All there is to do now is to fill up that container with this seaweed. And this particular batch that we spread out on this cot, again, we're gonna go ahead and dry this so that we can preserve it for a later date, for later use. And we may also powderize or perhaps keep it dry and use it as some form of mulch in my garden as well. So there's several ways to use this once it is dried. Okay, so here we are and we have filled up this three gallon container that has such a nice and very sturdy lid that will protect and seal this off from the weather conditions and also from any unsuspecting intruders that may want to get in there. And inside of the container you will find the seaweed and also the water that we have filled this bucket up with. And I actually filled up the bucket with water and part way I filled it up with seaweed. Now of course you can fill up the entire container with seaweed. I just chose to use a little less because I needed a weaker dose but the dosage is totally up to you on how strong you want it and once you have the desired amount we go ahead and seal it put it in a location where it is safe and there it will sit until it is complete now when exactly will it be done well again it is up to you the actual strength of the fertilizer will also be determined by exactly how long you allow it to sit. So you can choose to allow it to sit for a couple of days if you wanna go ahead and pour this liquid directly onto your plants, or you can let it sit for weeks and even months. Although I wouldn't allow it to sit too long because again, this does not have any preservatives or additives, so we should know that this also has a limited lifespan. And because this does have a lifespan, I would definitely use this at least within a month's time. Now, once we are done allowing it to sit, we have to filter all of the material, all of the seaweed out from the actual fertilizer or the liquid solution before we go ahead and use it on our plants. Now the seaweed that you do filter out from the fertilizer can actually be used to make several batches more. Just keeping in mind that each time you do make a batch, the actual fertilizer becomes weaker, therefore you will need less and less water to be diluted into the mix. And before we do use the liquid solution, which now has become our fertilizer, we definitely wanna go ahead and dilute it unless of course you've only let it sit for a day or two in which you can use it without diluting it and putting it directly on the plant. Now the way we determine exactly how much water we should be diluting this fertilizer with, we actually have to determine how strong it is, which of course equates to how long we've allowed it to sit. So the rule of thumb and ratio that I go with for every week that I've allowed it to sit, I add one part of water. So if I've allowed it to sit for one week, I would add one part of water. Two weeks, two parts of water. Three weeks, three parts of water. So on and so forth. 
Now, because there is a variation in which this fertilizer can be made, there may be a trial and error process before you get the exact formula the way you need it. So I definitely would test this out on a couple of plants before I commit to watering all of my plants. And that is a good rule of thumb to do anytime you are introducing your plants to something new. And there you have it, folks. Didn't I tell you that it was going to be easy as pie? As a matter of fact, it was easy as one two and three it doesn't get any more simple than this so now that we have fully prepared it I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in this safe place in my garden and I'm gonna leave it for about a month and then we're gonna use it on my garden and also on my orchids be sure to stay tuned for more because I definitely will update you with the process and also the results and there you have it folks that is a complete seaweed fertilizer wrap now I want to know from you guys if you guys have have ever made homemade fertilizers and what were the results for you also if you decide to give this fertilizer a try please keep me posted and let me know of your results and I thank you guys so much for allowing me to share this information with you and I hope you like this video and I also hope you learned something new from it as well if you did please be sure to like share and also subscribe and click that bell notification button so you'll know exactly when I do post a new video as you guys guys already know I truly do love and appreciate each and every one of you guys all and I will see you guys later and I'll also grow with you guys later as well bye bye for now Mwah.